Hey guys, I'm going to talk you through what we did in class on Wednesday for week nine. So we covered the pronouns of the third person and the direct reflexive pronoun. Uh, before we got started, I wanted to review exercise 141, 148. That is the one in the book that we had um, divided up into 11 different sections and each student was responsible to translate their portion. And so I had them... Um, I don't want to say acted out, but they basically read through this entire story um, doing the different people and each person just took their turns reading it. So it was kind of fun to hear the overall uh, story, but they didn't have to do the full translation because that would have been way too much. So then we got into our new um thing that we were learning and it's the pronouns of the third person. So I already had this chart right here, the blue, the pink, and the green on the whiteboard. And so literally all we did was we we just took some time to observe it and what do you see? Do you see any patterns? Do you see anything that looks familiar? What do you think it is? Because they didn't, I did not have this right here marked on the board. Um, I wanted to see if they could figure out what it was. So, of course, they figured out. They were like, oh, it must be masculine, feminine, and neuter. And they thought it was some other declension or something, and noun endings. Anyway, so um, I don't remember how I told it to them. Anyway, we came to the conclusion it was third person. But we did do some comparisons with our declension chart. And some of the observations that they made, uh, first and foremost, let's see. We noticed that we had this AUS right here in all three. Let's see, we noticed that down here we have an AO, AA, AO. Uh, that was kind of familiar. These three were all the same. Um, we do know in our noun declensions that usually the accusative singular ends with an M, except over here in the various. And we found the M there as well. Uh, but that one was different. And then down here, this is where things got really interesting. This looked almost identical to the endings that we find in the plural, e orum isos is, e orum isos is. And that happened, this was the same as the first declension. So we have i orum is as is, i orum is as is. And then um, over here, this was the neuter of second declension. The a uh, orum is a uh, is, a uh, orum is a uh, is. They just have an E on the front of them. So anyway, there's little things like that. When you start looking for those things, you will realize that you have a little bit less memorizing to do than you thought. But I want to encourage you at home this week to do a lot of copying of these pronouns. They really want to try to get them memorized, whether you flashcard them or uh, you can use in the workbook on page 131. You've got the, um, this is first and second person. And then when I turn the page over here, sorry. Oh, geez. I'm trying really hard not to lick my fingers these days. I cannot turn pages anymore. Anyway, here is your third declension. And so if you'll put a plastic sleeve over that and just make them copy it every single day, um, you will see that those pronouns will begin to stick in their heads. So there they are. So after we did that, we came over to the text and we just read. Uh, we took a look at this English sentence. We talked about what is a pronoun, how it renames a noun. Um, it usually follows a noun. The noun that it follows is called an antecedent. So we talked a little bit through the grammar of that. Um, we, we read this out loud. We talked about how in English, army, we don't really call an army by masculine, neuter. A lot of the nouns... Let me rephrase this. A lot of the nouns in Latin, they have a gender, whereas in English, we don't. So in English, we might call it an it, but in Latin, because this word is masculine, we would use the masculine form, and it's in the direct object position. He saw the army and feared it. So I think we did have this one on the board, and we, we parsed it. We had our subject, our verb, he saw what? He saw the army. That's a D-O. And there's a conjunction. Conjunctions always join two grammatically equal things. So it's joining the verb in D-O and 
another verb in DO. So it is in the direct object position, which puts it in the accusative. So when I look at our little chart over here, and I look at our accusative singular and the masculine, there's your EM. Okay? And there it is. So in English, we might call it an it, but in masculine, it's going to look kind of like a him, even though it's not really a person. So we looked at the rules in our blue book, and we chanted them a few times. We repeated them over and over and over again. And they just really want to get familiar with these particular pronouns. And then in our textbook, it also mentions this grammar rule number 479. So I always want to take a minute and look at those. Um, we had it highlighted, so we talked through this one. We didn't worry so much about the Latin, but we did look at the English sentence. And Rome is a large city. Have you seen it? It was referring to the city, all right? But in this situation, it would be the direct object. Have you seen what? Have you seen it? It's a direct object. Therefore, we have our accusative singular ending here. Anyway, we didn't look at these because we're not we're not there yet. But this first sentence right here, we did look at. Um, from there, we looked at our new vocabulary. I did have those on the whiteboard. And I'm sorry, y'all. I'm all over the place with this paper. Anyway, um, so we just talked through those. We had a verb. We compared our verb here in the second second conjugation to the second conjugation model verb, which is maneo, and we looked to see where the differences were. So the first principal part, second principal part, and third principal part all lined up with the model, but the fourth principal part is where things got a little wonky. So um, again, remember when you're learning your verbs, try to at least, even though you may not understand when you're gonna be using the different principal parts at this point, you wanna just begin to um, be familiar with those four principal parts and kind of just hear them in your head when you are memorizing the verbs. Anyway, we discovered that this particular noun right here is um, in the plural only because we have a genitive plural ending as opposed to a genitive singular ending. So once we looked at that new batch of vocabulary, um, which was here in the textbook, and we, we kind of walked through it on the board. We came on down here to exercise 151, and I believe we did sentence two. So I just had them, you know, we always go find the verb first. We identify, see if we can identify what the different words, um, how they're functioning as a verb or the subject. Um, we take a look at our endings and try to identify if it's a direct object, is it accusative, therefore DO, is it possessive, therefore genitive. We had an adverb here. Uh, this one took a little bit of time to break down because it was a verb and it involved this um, particle right here. When we put this in E on the end of our verbs, it's asking a question. And when we do that, this word comes up front of the sentence instead of being at the end of a sentence like over here. So we broke this one down. This guy told me it was a question. This guy to, gives me the personal pronoun. The bit tells me it's future. And this is our stem, and that tells me it um, what it actually means. So because um, we have our um, subject is hiding inside of our verb here, we labeled it as a subject and a verb. So really it means, will you warn? And who are we gonna warn? Warn who? Well, that's going to be our D.O., and I'm a, uh, I believe it means him. So anyway, we translated the sentence. Caesar does not see the enemy's column. Will you warn him? After we did that, um, I believe we moved on to the next thing. If you look in our textbook, we come over here to the direct reflexive. So I actually pulled these sentences right here, and I had them on the whiteboard. Well, they were not marked up yet. So I asked them, what, you know, what do you see? What do these sentences have in common? And of course, they recognize they all have this self pronoun right here. And so, you know, do you know what those are called? I don't, I don't remember if anybody knew what they were, but they are reflexive pronouns. Um, we went ahead and parsed the sentence. We had our subject, our verb, and then um, we just labeled this as a pronoun. But I'm pretty certain in this all of these are acting as the direct object. So we read our text. 
Um, as we were reading, we found some words that we didn't know what they meant, um, oblique. Uh, I have Googled that word, and it basically means anything but the nominative case. And you kind of get that right here. And actually, I think the kids figured it out, because I said, if the oblique cases are the genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative, um, you know, kind of, can you come up with a definition? And they were like, well, they're not the nominative. And I'm like, well, that's actually what it told me when I Googled it. So anyway, um, the key thing here with our reflexive pronouns is that um, they are going to refer, now they're in third person, okay, so we're talking about the third person reflexive pronouns, is they, they re always point back to whoever it is that's acting as the subject of the sentence. So, um, and that showed up in all of our examples up here. Whoever, it, the, the reflexive pronoun in all of these is pointing to the subject. Now, that doesn't mean it's acting the noun, it, I mean, the pronoun itself is functioning as a subject, um, but it is pointing to the subject. Um, anyway, so I think all these guys are the direct object. So they can have all sorts of different functions, but they will be pointing back to and referring to the subject of the sentence. So I believe we read through this and we found rule 127 in our grammar book, which I did have on the whiteboard. And I was like, why do you think we don't have a line here? And because we had already had this conversation about the oblique cases, I did have one student pipe up that, well, it doesn't um, ever act as a subject. It's always referring back to the subject, but it's not acting as the subject. So somebody asked, why are these here? And I do know, um, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little foggy about it. I know that they show up down the road a ways, and I, and I really think that sometimes it's just a, and interchangeable, and I could be wrong on that, but it's one of those things, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, they're gonna see this pronoun, the say. Uh, we did look at how this is um, very similar in, in its pattern and rhythm as the first and second pronoun words that we've already learned. See, do you hear this suey, sibby, say, say? And if I come over here, like these, tui, tibby, tay, tay, and me, me, he, me, me. So it, they're not unlike what we've already learned. We've just got to memorize the differences. Anyway, so um, when we looked at that, um, these sentences right here, we did go and read our text, all of the stuff that we just, I was just pointing to. And then that gave us a little bit more vocabulary, which I did already have on the whiteboard. And we talked through this um, I wanted to review what this word post positive means and, and that is that it, it never stands first in the sentence. It always follows something. Anyway, so after that, um, let's see, we translated a sentence in exercise 153. So we always parse first, we identify our parts of our speech, and then we work through this. Now I know that um, some of the kids really wanted to use the pronoun for we, which would be nos right here. And um, it's like, when, why do we sometimes use the pronoun and other times it's in our verb? I don't know the answer to that question. So I just kind of go along with, I look at the answer key, I see what they're doing and, and I work towards seeing if I can find a pattern. And I, I don't know that, um, there's a definite reason why we do it sometimes and sometimes we don't. I, I think when we want to emphasize the pronoun, we definitely will use the word for the pronoun. But I did tell them if they put the nos right here, that, I mean, I wouldn't count that wrong. It's okay to have it. Um, anyway, so once we did that, we spent some time uh, with these flashcards that I have that we play spoons with. And I love these flashcards. I don't know if I've ever shown them to you guys before. But they are, um, they're like a deck of cards. So I don't know if you can, I, I don't have two hands because I'm holding the phone, but they feel like the bicycle, a deck of cards, and you could shuffle them and everything. So when I made these, I made them so that you had, there's, there's nothing on the back. That way we could line them up next to each other if we wanted to. This particular batch is the, um, second person singular and plural so there's use all over the place 
So I had to specifically define that this one is the direct object and it's a plural, which would be different from you that's a direct object that's a singular. But then they can match them up with the Latin um, words. Anyway, you kind of see what I've got here. But I had, um, I divided them into three groups and I had several sets of these out, I believe. I had um, first conjugation verbs, second conjugation verbs. I had first and second um, pronoun pronouns. I had some adjectives in here, the first and second declension, and then the third declension. And then this right here was I pulled out all of the adverbs that we've learned so far, and I think I threw in um, also the question words, which some of them aren't labeled as adjectives, but I went ahead and stuck them in here. Anyway, so what I did was I combined a few of these sets so that I had three decks and I just gave them to the kids and we played spoons. So I seem to always forget my spoons, so they just used the whiteboard markers as a, as a spoon and they, they play together. So anyway, I hope you guys find this helpful and I will post a few pictures. Have a great night. Stay healthy.